beautiful state of Texas because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Hi friends, happy Wednesday! I'm here with the Mad Fairy crew. <laughs> Getting very fuzzy today, I yeah. might say. <laughs> Have y'all guys just been flying around spreading glitter all day? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somebody tell us something about your day. I did want to give a little shout out to Angelina Flurry. We had a couple of conversations with you today and you're always so sweet and you always have the kindest things to say and oh, it really God. does make our day to hear, you know, how happy y'all are with your felting magic and we're happy to be able to provide that for y'all. Yes. Hi Angelina, Hi. thank you. <laughs> okay, you guys, we're gonna have some fun today. Let's get started. Okay. Hi everyone and thank you so much for joining us today for Wooly Wednesday. This is our live show. This is what we like to do at least once uh, a week <laughs> if we can is hang out with our friends for about an hour. It's different every time. Sometimes there's tutorials. Well, there's been a lot of tutorials lately and sometimes it's more show and tell and sometimes we have a guest. Today we are going to do a little tutorial and I'm going to share that with you. Anne's giving me the thumbs up so I know we're live. Hey, well, if you're watching the live show, be sure to check in, say hi and where you're from. You'll see that we have friends all over the world. That's what they are doing. We are Living Felt Felting Supplies. We have a retail store here in Texas. We have an online store where most of you know us from. And we have an amazing group called Living Felt Friends right here on Facebook. And so I hope you'll join that too. If you're watching the playback, hit the subscribe button so you'll know every time we upload a new video. And if you're watching Facebook, you can hit that little bell up in the corner and it'll notify you whenever we're gonna go live. Who's with us, Anne? Let's See, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the page is loading. <laughs> Anne says her page is loading. Our, our playback is a little bit delayed from uh, where you are. So while I'm waiting to hear back from, to hear who's here, I want to give a big shout out to some friends in Greece. I'm wearing a necklace today that is a handmade from a lovely lady named Tasula. And uh, I think I would pronounce her last name Christodoulou and she is in Greece. She just started her business and what I love about this is the necklace was sent to me by her son Nikos who's a very good friend of my husband and Nikos is an entrepreneur who is an artisan in the music industry and makes amazing guitar pickups and he is supporting his mom and made her a new Facebook page. She made this necklace and it was gifted to me and so I want to give mad blessings to Tasula's business. It's called 888 Art number 888 because that's a lucky number for her and so blessings to you all at way out in Greece and thank you so much for my lovely gift I'm very moved by that cool who's with us Anne we have got Kathleen from Texas Robin <laughs> that's in fun. Oregon Don in the UK hi Kathleen hi Don hi Robin and I'm sure a bunch of other people popping in well let me tell you what we're gonna do today I'm gonna take a quick drink but let's look at what we made last time we have been uh, making felt samples and especially nano felt. We're going to nano felt again today. I want to build a little on our lessons and then we will jump back to needle felting probably next week. I know a lot of people are waiting for that. So we'll talk about that at the end of the show. Ooh, Wendy shares 888 is a lucky Chinese number too. Oh, very neat. That Wendy. Austin Rowling. Oh, very nice. Hi, Wendy. Nice to see you. Okay, so the very first uh, Nano Felt test we did, we made this, and some of you will remember it. And we did the uh, teal gauze or chiffon on the back. I can't remember which it was. This is what we made together last week. We made a Nano Felt with some felt inclusions. We used some different silks. We made these little baubles. We did a little inclusion here. There's some inclusions here which don't really show up. They could use some top stitching. And these were inclusions also under the pink. And then on the back is uh, silk also. And so maybe you can see how puckered that is from being fulled down. And that was the goal. I felted it down to make it a pucker. So before we jump off of nano felting, what I'd like to do is give you a fun little project uh, I want to call this segment felt on the fly because I came in this morning and didn't really know what I wanted to make with you all. 
I have this huge long list of things for us to make together and so I consulted the fairy council and gave them some options and it was to make a pouch so I want to see if you're amenable to that today uh, and this would be felting over a resist with nano felt and we'll add in some of our inclusions and so we can either make a pouch that is, you know, kind of a, like just a, a half that you could make a slit and sew a zipper in, or we could make one that has a flap uh, over it. So would you like to learn how to make a pouch with a flap or just do a real simple one with a zipper inclusion? And you can kind of vote now. <laughs> Voting is good. Pouch is getting a lot of love. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Let's see. I think we're waiting for the flap or no flap okay flap or no flap yeah do you want to learn how to do this is just a little lesson so you could learn how to make either it's a, a pillow or a felt over resist even a pillow with a flap over can be helpful because you can learn how to um, you know slip in the pillow as opposed to insert a zipper which I like doing I like sewing in a zipper but sewing in a zipper is much easier on a flat piece of fabric before you actually sew it together so let us hear from you and I want to show you, um, I'm gonna, we're going to turn down our camera here in just a minute and show you our supplies, but let me tell you why I'm calling it felt on the fly. One of the things I think is that sometimes it's nice for us to have a gift to give and I want to show you something you can make with maybe you just using objects found around the house and your own stash. So we're going to make our pouch around this little notebook which I was carrying in my purse today. So that was kind of, I gave my challenge. I had to find something to use as a model that I already had and this little notebook is what we're going to build our pouch off of. What do you got Anne? It is unanimous oh. flap. Okay, so we're going to do with the flap. So Marie's going to try and do bionic felting. Uh, we're going to try and move as fast as we can. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, uh, we're going to turn down our cameras. We're going to look at the materials. We're going to look at the tools. And there's going to be a bunch of boring section where you just see my hands rolling this towel in a thing. So that's a great time to ask questions and even maybe share, share new ideas. We are building on the last two lessons. Uh, unless you've never wet felted, then you're going to want to jump all the way back to the pancake lesson. We have a whole segment dedicated to wet felting on our YouTube channel. Just search Living Felt and you're going to see us felting often in real time on this show. So we're going to turn down and have a quick look at what we brought today. Okay, everyone, thank you for being here. Anne's giving me the thumbs up. This is my collection of goodies. This is what we're going to use as our model. So let me set this aside. I'm going to explain it and then tell you how you can get a little support document after the live show. So we're going to make our pouch basically in this shape. And what would happen is um, the wool would have to be able to go all the way around this shape, but then also have extra to make this flap. So when we felt something, for those of you who are brand, brand new, the what you start out and what you end with is two different things because the wool gets closer and closer together as we felt and therefore it shrinks. So we have to always expand uh, our template or whatever pattern or resist we use when we felt something. And so we have to make the model for this bigger. And, um, this is actually the size and I'm going to explain that to you but then we're going to look at the supplies. So this little booklet and I'm going to run through it, don't worry about the math because it's going to be on the support document. This little booklet is what um, five and uh, how wide is it Anne? I have my notes over there. Sorry. Yeah. I have my, here I have my cheat sheet. Thank you. Okay. This little thing is five and a half inches and the depth is a half inch on either side. I want my wool to go all the way around, so I'm gonna add that half inch. If you want a little bit of girth in what you're making, you can go ahead and add that, especially when it gets thicker or thicker. Um, so the thicker your model object, you like if you wanna make a purse that has a nice gusset around it or a vessel that has a gusset around it, whatever, you wanna account for that dimension. So that brings uh, the 5.5, we're going to have a target size that we're shooting for, which would be six inches. Is that right, Anne? My target size, six or six and a quarter. I, I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at the paper that I'm going to be giving to you. Um, the target size would be six and a half for this. And then 
around here, we, our wool is going to need to go all the way around, but we need to extend it up to, for the flap. So basically, we need enough that it's going to go like this, because I don't want the flap to come all the way down the book. I want it to go part way down the book. So this resist, or this is going to kind of give us a pouch that looks like this. You open it, and then you could put stuff inside. And let me show you that with fabric, just so it makes sense. This is just nothing more than a little um, visual of what we're going to be making. We're going to make a little pouch. I'm going to shrink it down as much as I can on the show today. And that pouch would only fold down about that far, and you would be able to put stuff inside here. Okay? That's what we're going to make. What we have for you to download is going to be a little uh, paper that shows you the math I used today on this booklet, just to give you a model for making your own. And I'm going to try and explain it, you know, as we do it. And then we also have, Anne's going to link to our shrinkage calculator for those who look, use Excel. Uh, the very first um, sort of working worksheet in the shrinkage calculator is just a table. You can put your desired measurements into it and your expected shrinkage based on this little t line of data here. We're expecting today a shrinkage of 40%, so our multiplier is 1.67. And I know you probably can't see that, but if you download this, you can see it. And if you don't want to do that, you'll be able to download this PDF, and it's going to explain it all for you. And we're going to post that in the files under our group, Living Felt Friends. Okay? Okay, so this is going to be our template. But let's look at our supplies. I'm going to be working with fine merino top. This is going to be my primary color, uh, which is coffee. Um, and then I also have another brown and purple. I have some other fun fibers we'll play with. Sorry, silk waist, some neps as well. I have some um, bamboo and I have some viscose here that's nice and shiny. I have a silk hanky. We'll work some of these things into the surface design, but we're also going to go back to using some of our silks. Our very first lesson was a silk sandwich, so we're going to make a silk sandwich. And if all you have is a scarf, you can use a scarf and cut off the um, trim or hem if it has a hem on it and use that because we're going to make a little silk sandwich today. Need to come back a little? I think you can zoom out. I think there's room to zoom out. I have some thrift store silks and some other silks from my stash, a little bit of pre-felt, and then I have some uh, little felted bits just we're going to include. So if you're brand, brand, brand new, watch the previous lessons and you'll kind of see what we're building on today. Okay? Cool, Anne's giving me the thumbs up. That's all I need. I need a little thumbs up. Okay, I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way. And like I said, we're gonna go pretty much as fast as we can. I'm gonna put down my rubber grippy so that I don't slide all over the place. Put down a towel so that I can just felt and roll kind of all in one. It's like eating on your placemat, kind of. Are we in okay positionally, Anne? We are, I'm just moving this up a little okay. bit. I'm gonna put this underneath. Oh, I didn't mark this one. Let me mark, I need to mark this one. This is where I'm gonna put my flap. Right about here, I think. I want to mark where my flap is, is going to be on my template. So this is facing me. This is my flap where it would fold down. Right now, this is just going to go underneath my plastic. This is a very thin piece of plastic. Oh, I should mention uh, resist material. This is a resist material. We sell it in the shop. It's like a foamy substance. It's a great resist, resist material, especially if you're doing something with heavier fibers, thicker layers, um, something with slower felting fibers, and you want to really feel your resist inside. I'm putting a piece of plastic over. So this right now is just going to be underneath serving as a guide. 
And for my real resist, I'm gonna use this little thin bubble wrap, which is also what we sell as like a nano felt resist in the shop. And this, if you're doing things that are more light and more delicate, this might be what you're interested in. What we're going to be doing is putting the wool basically around this resist up to here with our flap coming up here, okay? And if I, there's two ways to go about it, front or back, and hmm, I'm just trying to decide how I wanna do it right now. Okay. So can y'all see my, I know you can maybe barely see my bubble wrap, but this is my flap line and I am going to be lining my bag with this pink silk. So, let's start from what would be the back. So that means, let me see, I'm gonna do that from the inside, here we go. Try and decide, deciding what I'm going to do. This is, I'm, I'm calling it felt on the fly because this is what do you do if you like, you wanna make a gift on the fly and you're not really prepared. This is like me today, not necessarily prepared for uh, a, a big lesson. And so I thought I cut that a little shorter. Um, so here's our silk and our silk only needs to come up to here, uh, which will be the, where the pouch actually stops. You could, tuck, you could tuck it under also, but I'm not worried about a neat edge. And the fun thing about silk is you can rip it. And Jane asks, so bubble wrap here is the resist? Yes, bubble wrap is the resist. Okay, so this is going to be the body of my purse right here. It's going to be lined with this pink silk and this is gonna be the flap that folds down. I wanted my silk a little bit bigger so that I can fold it over. And especially if you're new, you're gonna like that effect to kind of fold it over. The only difference is on the flap, we don't really need it folded over. So I'm gonna cut it when I get to that part. Just to make the layout a little bit easier, you can actually wet the silk to keep it from sliding around too much. You can wet it as soon as you get it on here. And what I think we'll do is start with the layout of this side since it's bigger. So that's the back, does that make sense? We don't know what this pouch is gonna be used for. Put a special gift in, a keepsake in, or whatever, we have no idea. I'm gonna wet this so that I can control it a little bit. My water is cold, which is absolutely perfect. And you don't need, when you're nano felting, you wanna use cold water or room temperature water uh, until you get to the fulling stage, which is where you're actually shrinking the item. Patricia asks, do you ever worry about the Sharpie bleeding onto the silk or wool? Yeah, yeah, the Sharpie can bleed on there, but I'm using brown. Um, I'm gonna be using brown, so I'm not really all that worried about it. Um, yeah, the Sharpie, the Sharpies can bleed, yes. Now, I'm tucking my silk around the resist here. And you can do this one side at a time, um, or you can do it just like this. It's gonna shrink up and it's gonna hug. And then up here, I'm actually just gonna texture it and let it kind of crinkle on the backside. So I fully encased my little resist in my silk. And as long as my resist is covered, I really don't care. This can be textured on the inside. So I'm gonna flip it back over again. The silk, this particular silk, I don't know where I got this silk, but this silk runs. <laughs> so, you know, you always want to test your fibers and what you have. And I knew it ran because we used it last time. Remember, Ann? Oh. And I knew it ran. So you just want to test your fibers and such and know fibers and fabrics and know how it's going to behave. But I'm not worried about it in this project. So what kind of silk is this? This is just going to be a silk chiffon. And I don't know where I got it. We don't sell, we don't sell this particular silk. So 
I want to encourage you to use what you have. We do sell a nice variety of silk chiffon um, scarves and margalon silk and fun stuff like that. Um, but you know, pick up on thrift store silks too. Buy silk with us. Just build your collection as much as you want. Now here on the edges, all I'm gonna do is gather this silk back a little bit off the edge and even let it crinkle, that's fine. What's fun about um, wetting it is you can make it do stuff like that. Like you can crinkle it up once it's wet. And now what I have is my little resist fully encased in silk. And we're gonna cover this side with fiber. Dry my hands. Okay. When you're working with your fiber, especially just remember to divide it into both lengths and widths that you can handle easily. I like to divide it in half and at least in half again. Sometimes I'll divide it down into eighths. Depends on how much you want to control it or how easy it is to control. I'm going to trim the top of this resist right here around. I'm going to just trim it right around and I'll let you ask, ask questions while I do that. I'm gonna trim and then we're gonna fill in the body. Anne's typing away. So for those who are new, Anne's the, Anne's the producer over there. She's answering your questions on the fly and, um, or trying to, we may not be able to answer every question. Your questions, we see them about anywhere between 15 to 25 seconds after you post them. So we do our best to kind of get back to them. What do you got, Ann? My air's blowing, but I need it on. <laughs> Ann's reading. <laughs> so someone uh, Vicki asked if I do not have silk is there anything else that I might have around the house to replace well it? you could use cheese silk but you know I mean cheese silk you could use cheesecloth if you will but just remember our encouragement that you always test your materials first so test your materials some other fibers or fabrics will uh, work with nano felting but remember to make your test samples first because you don't want to endeavor to make something big and grandiose and uh, you know waste your materials and then find out that the fabric is just lousy at felting so definitely make your tests first let's see oh, judy asks do you leave enough wool overlapping the, overlapping the edge to wrap around? Yeah, we're going to, but right now I'm just trimming. Now on the flap, you don't. On the flap, it's not going to, here it's not gonna wrap around because we're gonna peel back the, the resist on the other side. So we're gonna cover this side 100%. Sometimes I build up that thickness, you know, right across the top there. So you know, that's why you kind of want to know where your top is so you don't wrap it all the way around on both sides. But we are going to put a nice little thin layer. And um, I tell you what, I'm just going to do a real thin layer of fiber. Remember, a silk sandwich, when you have the fabric, can be really thin. And this is the top. This is the part that shows. Remember, the flap is what people will see, not what's underneath it. So you might not want to put big, bulky, decorative items underneath where the flap will go. Just keep that in mind. And someone asked earlier um, if we were doing two layers of of silk. I'm, no, one layer of silk. But, you know, there's going to be silk in the surface design, um, but not 100% coverage. There will be silk in the surface design, but not 100% coverage. Okay, so this is my flap. I'm just going to do my flap first, and that way I know where my flap is. If this were a purse that you carry, then this part right here would most likely rub the body. Now this purse is gonna be tiny, really. This pouch or whatever, it's gonna be tiny, so it may not rub the body, but 
we, we like to do these lessons as skills builders so that you try something real small and easy and see how that works for you and then you might endeavor to make something even bigger. Vicki asks about how much wool would a project like this I, you know what, we'll weigh it when we're all done, but I brought in one ounce of this dark brown wool and I would be surprised if I tapped into that very much at all. Yeah, I would be really surprised. Um, I'm making the flap just a little bit. I'm just going over one more layer up to this top and then we'll put some design elements on it. Again, so we know where we are. You want to keep in mind who's the flap. <laughs> Where's the flap begin and where does the flap end? And I just want one little more little bit there. This is going to be a very thin little pouch, except it's going to get more dense as we full it and shrink it down. So on the, let's see here. I know. Now, for those of you who have, who have been with us a little bit, we've been building on some design elements and we've shown you a few times how to make these little baubles. Um, and so I've made two here. I'm going to make one more for those who are brand, brand new, and we're going to put this right on the flap. So I started this just to um, move a little more quickly. I can't believe what time it is already yet. Oh my gosh. How'd that happen? <laughs> Did I talk that much? Okay, we're going to take a little strip of wool. I'm going to make just a little ball with it. Make a real tiny one. And I'm actually going to add to it. If we need to go a little bit over, I'll try. But what we'll do is, you know, we're trying to teach this method. We've taught you how to wet felt. We taught you a little bit about laying out the fiber and we've given you a few different ways to do that. We've shown you how to make these little baubles and do some other inclusions. And hopefully this is just a project where you can start to apply that to. And the fulling part, you'll get. The layout part is the part I think that keeps most people from not starting. Do you agree, Ann? What happens is we get a lot of calls or emails or messages that say, do you have a pattern for this? Do you have a pattern for that? And I want to show you, get you thinking about stuff you have around the house that you could make your own pattern from. The math is really not that scary. My um, anchor fiber, I'm using the brown instead of the purple, just in case it shows. And my fingers are good and wet. <laughs> Not the most desirable, okay. So remember on these little guys, having them close together is nice and helps with your design layout. And remember we leave these little anchor trails coming out the bottom and mine are, I made them the beads purple. And let's look at, this might be a little big for this pouch. So I'm gonna cut this fabric down. You just need enough that there's once you make your baubles, there's still fabric left to anchor into the wool. Cheryl says, I like that color combination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pink and brown is a favorite for me, that's for sure. Pink and brown and orange and gold all together is kind of fun. So this is my pouch. Uh, yes, design elements are going to impact the shrinkage, but you know what, have fun with it, play with it, make a few things, find out what you like and what you don't like. All right, so I'm gonna put that down there and let's add a few more things just to this top since it's showing. Um, why don't we, should we bring a little, no, no pink, that's too extreme. Um, that's too brown. Often I make my decisions before I'm actually felting. And these two, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to put a nice big hanky as a transition. This is just nothing more than a silk hanky, which is an unspun cocoon, which has been stretched into a square. They've been dyed. So I'm going to put a hanky right there is like a fun textural element to make a bridge. This is some viscose, which I think is gonna provide a real nice uh, sheen. I'm gonna bring that in there. Not a lot of, not a lot of mm, technical work on the surface design today. 
and let's see. Questions, thoughts? Let's see. Brenda asks, can this pouch be made in any size, even like the size a briefcase would be? Oh, sure, but you're going to have to get thicker. When you're going to make something like a briefcase and you want it to hold a lot of weight, you might really look at the fibers that you, the fabrics that you use and the fibers that you use because you want it to get more dense. So I have a gorgeous purse here made for me by uh, Kimberly Pulley of Pulley's Woolies. Man, that thing is thick and I could really load it up if I want to. So you want to think about the purpose of your object and I think we talk a little bit about that in the past and I would say, you know, make a test. I remember I was having a pair of shoes, wool shoes made for me and I had to make the felt and I was sending them to a shoemaker for her to put, this was before you could buy all this stuff now, but I sent it to a shoemaker and that wool, the fiber had to be a half inch thick. And so I had to make tests to learn um, how to get that fiber that I was working with to be uniformly thick, half inch, like really, really felted because you have to really shrink it down to achieve that. So yes, and just remember to um, remember to test your materials. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to put this on the back, and just for fun, I'm going to put another another piece of fabric because it's amazing how different they look once they're all felted in. And then we're going to fill in this little back area, and um, just keep cracking. What else you got, Ann? Alrighty, Jane asks. Will the silk can keep felt in by itself or will it need wool to connect it? It's going to felt in. It's going to be, we, I like to glob it on there big and textural like that and um, like this and it's going to do its job. You can even use hankies to hold other things down at times. So play with those. Alrighty and which side of the purse are we, are we looking at right now? Are we looking this at is the, the flap. This is the flap because the flap is what you're going to see. Um, so that's why I wanted to do the flap first. The flap is what we're going to see. In fact, under this, let's put a little bead. We have some felted beads we've made in the past. We have a video for how to make felt beads fast. It's great to have some just kind of at the ready and available. If you're ever concerned about your felt beads sticking, you can rough them up, but you can also put fibers right over the top. In this case, I'm gonna use it just as a little mound right there. Just one. And I'm gonna keep on trucking. Ask me anything. Sandra asks, can you use a bamboo merino roving blend for netto felting? Yes, yes, you, 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 you can. You might want to test the shrinkage rate, but especially anything you want to use for surface design, have fun with that. You know, the surface design, you can, you can do a lot of things with that. Okay, now I'm going to fill in this back part, and you all just keep asking questions. These are great questions, so ask away. And I'm just going to follow the same pattern that I did, and I will extend over now so we can wrap over to the other side. And some people, by the way, when they wrap over, they only wrap on one side. It's an interesting thing. It's going to depend on how you flippy flop it, but um, we'll wrap around on both on both sides and all edges. We are slightly overlapping for those who are brand new. Um, you can make something even smaller. You can make a coin purse. You can make a little, I don't know, like a tiny, tiny little thing. Um, or make a flat piece. I think later in the year we'll look at some ways you can uh, work off your examples. Do something with the samples that you made. Alrighty, and Linda asks, do you need to add a liner out of material to the pouch or purse? No, this is, I'm using the silk fabric as a liner. And even if it was 100% wool, like you could do this same project 100% wool, you wouldn't need a liner. You just want your, your wool to be thick enough, um, you know, to accommodate whatever you're going to put in it. But a liner is not required and doing the silk like this kind of acts as a liner. One of the first things I did was I just sort of, came up with the idea of using a scarf for a nano felt purse and um, so this is kind of building on that idea a little bit a little bit cat asks do the neps just felt in without anchoring yeah the, the neps will on it with a fine fiber and some of them won't stick and i don't even worry about it 
I don't care. Some will stick and some won't. So come what may when it comes to Neps and me. And um, I, I feel like it's just a little bit of fiber confetti and I can be very forgiving about that. Cheryl asks, does it matter what kind of fabric remnants you use for the design of your Yeah, they need, to, they, need to, they need to allow the fiber to migrate through them. So if you were to throw down a quilting square, you'd probably be sorely disappointed. So they do need to allow the fiber to migrate through them. Um, so let's just think of an example real quick. I'm working with fine fibers right now, and if I put a real coarse fabric down, the fibers are going to get a lot of resistance trying to get through the fabric, and they'll just felt to themselves. So if you want to try heavier weight fabrics, you might also try some coarser fibers. That's going to slow down the whole process, um, but you can at least experiment a little bit. So just remember, a sample can be as small as a coaster if you just want to see, does this stuff work? Okay, I'm not going to fuss a whole bunch with the back here, but just to play a little bit with fibers, this is some dyed bamboo, and I'm going to put this on just to kind of carry the theme. I don't even worry about it so much when it comes to um, surface design sometimes. I just like to find my way as I go. And... Um, This pouch is not going to be a purse to carry, and so I'm just going to get a little textural back here on the back and have fun with that. What do you got, Anne? Linda asks, if you are working on a larger project and don't have the table space, can you felt it in steps to accomplish the finished project? Can you felt it in steps? You could definitely pick it up and put it down, and I think that might be what you're saying. Can you pick it up and put it down? You absolutely can. Um, you can start and you can stop. Uh, if you're going to wait more than a day or so, then definitely let it dry out. Just let it dry out. Judy asks, is viscose and bamboo fiber the same thing? If not, what... I think the, the truth is I think that they're very similar uh, in how they're made and you'd have to you know basically Wikipedia it but I think that they are actually very very similar but they do have some differences in how they perform and how they even feel to your hands um, I just think that they're very close they're very very close Okay, also this is kind of boring design on the back, but I think I'm going to leave it in the essence of time and we are going to wet this out so that we can uh, just get moving a little bit on our project. And I want to help y'all see this come to life. So again, the water is cold. I just have my olive oil soap dumped right into my bucket um, just so that I can keep my water soapy. When we wet out our project, the goal is to get water and soap all the way through the wool. So the first thing you always want to do is press, is press, press, press everything in place. And a couple of our clothing friends want to know, for, for a notice of the pouch like this, is it, will it hold up to everyday use? <laughs> no, this is a delicate pouch. If you want to felt something for everyday use, all I could say is, you know, I would make the wool much thicker than this. If you, I, I mean, I'm pretty rough on my purses, y'all. I don't know about you, but this to me is a fussy little thing, and I would probably put a little keepsake or treasure in it or use it as a gift. Um, but I wouldn't carry this every day because it will pill. Wool will pill. It, you know, even if you felt it really well, or you might have to go to a more dense, um, a, a thicker, more robust fiber, but this is a nice fine fiber. So if you're going to carry this like a purse or something like this with a purse, then wear it with your favorite sweater, <laughs> you know, or something to that effect. And, you know, just be a little more, uh, a little more gentle with it or make a more robust piece. Now what I am barely, barely massaging at all, what I want to do is get all of the water and soap in and just do an initial rubbing and agitation on this side before I flip it over. And any fibers that are in here on the, the flap, we can tuck it over when we're done. 
I mean, before when we get to the other side. Now for those who are brand new and you're watching me, I'm very gently gliding my hands across this piece. I'm kind of going around these little baubles because I want to get that silk fabric to anchor. I'm not rubbing very hard. One, you have to go very slow when you're wet felting. You want to give the fibers time to bind them to themselves, but we also want to give the fibers time to migrate through the fabric. So we want to go slow. You want to make sure nothing is sticking to your mesh. Hankies are very sticky. They always want to stick. So take a moment if you're new to the mesh uh, and peel it back. And if you don't like it, well, then you could use the plastic. Uh, and we'll, we can switch to that in a minute. But I want to rub just a little bit more before we flip it over. And I'm not rubbing anything that's trailing off. Don't felt anything that's trailing off and we're going to wrap to the other side. Okay, that's just a little bit, just a little bit of action. We're going to flip this whole thing over and I think I'm going to flip it this way. Oh, here's what I can do. This will help you. Where's the plastic? You know, I have another piece. Hmm. Any questions there, Anne? I'm missing a piece of plastic. I'm going to flip. I was looking for my second piece of plastic, but what you can do if you're concerned uh, about flipping a piece over is sandwich it either between plastic or um, bubble wrap and just flip the whole thing over like that. It makes it super, super easy. I'm gonna get my mesh out of there in a minute, but the first thing we're gonna do is wrap this wool around the second side so y'all can kind of see what's happening. Robin asks, can you let something dry and then wet it again to attach it to another felted piece? You, you could, yes but you need to make sure it's not felted too far. I mean, you're gonna to have to control how far you felt something. So you wanna just take it to the pre-felt stage, to the gentle pre-felt stage when you do that. So if you've never wet felted before, you know, learn what it is to make a pre-felt first before you do that. Because it would be easy to felt it too far and then not have it stick all the way. But you can make a pre-felt, you can. Okay, this is very thin. We're just gonna pull all this in and then we're gonna cover this part. Now, here under the flap, here, what you can do, this is all gonna be the flap, right? So you can just kind of scooch all this fiber in and this is gonna be very thin and very delicate. But we're just gonna scooch all that in just like we did on the last thing we made together. I'm not worried about it being staying totally symmetrical. I put those baubles in there and everything. So we're gonna put wool around this side and I can see already we're not gonna get very far. So what we should decide is, um, do, we, do I felt this on my own after I fill this up? Do I felt this on my own or do we finish it together next week? Or do I have to go live on like Friday and do it again? <laughs> <laughs> finish it on Friday. Oh. Friday for the finish. I like it. Let's see what people say. <laughs> what are people saying in right now? What do we have? Let's my hands. I gotta do my hands. Okay. For comments to come in. And I know it's not very fancy, y'all. I haven't made anything very fancy, but more the point of today is to give you a project that you can do with some of the lessons you've learned so far. Because we've been doing lots of little wet felting lessons and we haven't wet felted over resist in a while. We made our gnomes in, at Christmas time, wet felted gnomes. We needle felted gnomes too. Uh, in the fall, we wet felted pumpkins. Um, We've done simple pumpkins and fairy tale pumpkins, which is a more intermediate project, if you will. But we haven't felt it over resist in a while. What do you got, Nan? 
uh, together. <laughs> Everybody to wants to felt it perfect. together. Okay, so then what we would do is I'm going to felt it as far as I can with you today, and we'll pick it up next week. So I'm going to keep laying out this fiber, but let me say I know there's a number of you that are waiting uh, for us to get back to needle felting. And so let's talk about that uh, just while I'm doing this real quick. We're looking at needle felting like a little toadstool together. What is, are some projects, um, would that be fun to do? Do you want to needle felt a little toadstool, like a little mushroom house? Um, what would people like to make together? Okay. I'm gonna let this stick over. I'm gonna let this stick over a little bit on each side I want this to be a little reinforced. One thing I notice on purses like this is sometimes right here at the flap, it tends to felt in more. I haven't worked out all the science behind that. I haven't made that many. I used to make more purses when I first started felting and then I kind of ran out of people to give them to. <laughs> um, I do have a, a little more um, advanced purse project and maybe we can get to that later in the year too. What do you got, Ann? My hands are sticky. Ooh, let's see, a couple toadstools, a mushroom house. Okay, so y'all are fine if we, if we don't get back to needle felting for a couple of weeks and we finish felting this together next week. Is that the general consensus, Ann? We finished felting this yes. together. Yeah, but it was an, an, very. A lot of folks wanted to to finish to get felting this together. Okay. Okay. So I've used now um, almost half my wool. So I'm almost, I think, at about a half ounce of fiber so far. A very thin project. Uh, very. I'm sure I could have used less if I wanted to. Um, and I think what we'll do is keep the inside of this plain and I'll look at some ways we can even um, finish that. Although, you know, when we finish felting it together, it'll be, it's going to be hard to finish it together. I mean, finish, finish, you know, details and such. Looking for stuff. Oh, my mesh is underneath. <laughs> okay, Kamos, y'all tell us something. Robin asks, uh, would this format, would this be the format to make an evening clutch type purse? Sure, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You can absolutely do this to make that kind of thing. You absolutely can. Okay, so uh, for those of you watching me for the first time, where's my sponge? Can't find anything here. I also like to wet out with a sponge, so if you don't have a ball brass, or it's just not something you necessarily like using. I also like to wet felt with a sponge and I just press the water all the way through. I'm gonna need some water here in a minute, but I think we're okay. I think we can start felting with what we have and then um, we'll see just how far we get. Now you don't have to use the mesh. Um, the mesh is something we carry in the shop. I like it because I can feel what's happening uh, with my hands. Um, but if you don't have mesh, you can just use plastic. Ooh, our building friends are suggesting some really fun things for for, for Wooly Wednesday projects. Yeah. Okay, like what? Um, well, Mushroom House is a very popular one. I think Marjolaine said it'd be cute. Uh, that could be the start of a little felted scene. Um, mm -hmm. Someone said needle felting different faces would be good. Uh, needle felted butterflies, um, <laughs> needle felted fairies, yeah. Cute. Says fun things. Okay. <laughs> Super fun things. Okay, we're not even going to um, felt that very much. Uh, we showed last time kind of how it works when you're felting on top of the plastic. In this case, we have bubble wrap. You want to get it wet and soapy so that your hands slide across and then you're basically massaging against the bubble wrap underneath. And if you use plastic, then there's really no concern about it sticking to the mesh. I'm going to flip my piece back over. We have it fully encased. I'm going to keep it nice and thin like this, just how we've made it. I'm gonna wrap the rest of this wool around to this side. We're gonna keep the design pretty organic um, on the back and you know whatever we have down, we're just gonna leave it like that. 
This is one of the things about putting the design layer on. Depending on the, the size of your project, sometimes you want to wait to put the design layer on because of the folding of the wool back over the other side. But honestly, I'm not even going to worry about that. It's another reason I like mesh, is the mesh is a lot easier to fold the fiber back over than plastic. I forget that. You, when you're filting over resist, the key thing is that you really want to hug the resist. Um, somebody in the group was talking the other day about getting a seam. And a seam is when your wool slides off the resist and kind of felts to itself. So when you're learning to felt over resist, um, what I like to do is always rub to the center, to the center, like this to the center, to the center. And I like to massage a bit before I start rolling to kind of get the wool to hug into the resist. If you're brand, brand new, you might like the thicker resist because it gives you a little more something to push against. And if it feels really sloppy and difficult to control, you might blot just a little bit of water out like I did right there just now so that you can make sure um, that you have control over that fiber. So I'm going to take this mesh off. That is the start of our design right there. I don't seem to have another piece of plastic, so I'm going to sandwich this in my plastic like that. And we're going to roll. So we have just a few minutes left in today's show. And this is why it takes, uh, sometimes it's difficult to make something on the fly. <laughs> It takes a little bit of time. I'm actually gonna roll, I think from, I'm gonna roll from side to side first. Um, I'm gonna roll in this direction first. And I like to put my noodle right on my project there. And when you roll, just remember that you're gonna roll an even number of times from all sides. But if you want it to shrink in a particular direction first, then you'll lay your fiber. You might lay your fiber in that direction and you might roll from that direction first. I'm not pressing right now, I'm just rolling. And here's what I'll do uh, total, is we'll roll it 100 times from each side, even if we don't get that far on camera, okay? 100 times from each edge on both sides. <laughs> Kathy says, did you say someone didn't need a bag? Who doesn't need a bag, <laughs> For those of you who are brand brand new, notice that you know, what, you know, as we roll, we usually like to move our hands out so that we're touching all parts of the project as we roll. And I like to do these little rock and rolls on small projects. But what I do is like every 25 rolls is I give the whole thing a quarter turn. Your roll should stay round while you're rolling. If it's getting sloppy, then use your uh, ties, old t-shirts or something to kind of tie it up and keep it round and make sure that you count or time yourself so that you apply the equal number, equal amount of agitation to all edges. That's gonna help you control your shrinkage. How are we doing, Ann? I'm doing good. Jake says, upper body workout time. <laughs> exactly. So this is the boring part I told you. I will, um, after, I'm gonna just flip it around so y'all see, you can do stuff, uh, you can, when you're controlling your rolls, you can do quarter turns. I'm gonna roll from each of these sides first. Each of the side sides, not. <laughs> Sorry. That was an emergency breakthrough on my phone. <laughs> Papa Smurf can always get through the. <laughs> the do not disturb. <laughs> okay, y'all, so if you're going to start, you know, if you're going to make a little pouch and you've never done this, you might even start with one that's just a little bit smaller than this. You could even do like a little round vessel or something if you're going to felt before we get together next week. You can post pictures either of your progress or post your questions in our group, Living Felt Friends. And what we will do is just like bringing you back these samples, after I have rolled this a hundred times from all four edges, 
on both sides. How many rolls is that, Anne? <laughs> Come on. A hundred times from all four edges on both sides. How many rolls will I have done? 800. Yes. Yay. After I have done 800, that's where I'll come back to with you all next week so you can see what's the result of this purse rolled that many times. Seem good? Okay. So I think that's about 100. And then, so now we've rolled from each edge. I'm going to keep it on this side and roll bottom up and top down, flip it over and do the same. And I'll give you just a little sneak peek. There's not much to see. This is the state that we're in. And this side's shorn up straight and this side uh, not, not quite so straight, but it's all going to come to fruition and we can hand felt this also. So we're going to keep working on this. I hope that maybe you'll endeavor to start one of your own and come what may, this is going to be some kind of pouch <laughs> that we've made together. So we're going to turn up the cameras because now it's time to give away prizes. We always like to give away prizes at the end of the show. So all the fairies uh, or most who's ever available will come back. Okay, everyone, thank you for that patience. We didn't get as far as I hoped we would get today, but that's kind of how wet felting is. And we were even prepped and set up. So that's why uh, I say it's such a good idea to make samples because then you don't waste a whole Saturday because it takes a while to get your ideas together, your fibers together, to get prepped and set up. Um, and I'm gonna finish my 800 rolls. How are y'all doing? Good, good, good. good. <laughs> Come on in, we're gonna give away some prizes. And <laughs> my hand tripped over something. <laughs> so how this works is if you have been, is Anne in there? Oh, come on in, Anne. Beep, 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 beep. I'm in. <laughs> if you have contributed to the conversation while we have been live, you've asked a question or something like that, Anne is madly scribbling your name <laughs> down <laughs> while you do that. So the gals are going to draw prizes and give away some fun stuff for you to play with. First name is Terry Brino. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Terry, you win a Nana Felting a Scarf Kit in your choice of colors. Bye. Just email, you can email your color choice to customer service at livingfelt.com. Mm -hmm. Holly. Judy Wilson. Yay! Yay! <laughs> oh, I think I read off the prizes wrong. I think we are oh. doing two prizes today, and you could select either prize one or prize two. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whoops, I'm sorry about so that. So this was your first one, right? A <laughs> yep. nano and scarf kit? That or, is prize one. Uh -huh. Or you can select prize two, which is your choice of a merino top color. Mm -hmm. A merino silk blend and we've got one yard of silk fabric and some bubble wrap yes. so if you wanted to make yes. the pouch <laughs> that Marie made today this would be the prize to pick. Yeah. Fun! Nice. Yeah. Fun, fun, fun. Nice. Cool! Okay, let me, so only, did you say only two? Two! Yeah, two yeah, tries two. Did she Oh, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Patricia Roberts Thompson! Yay! Yay. Congratulations. Yeah, and that's it. Is that did we draw all three names already? Oh, yep, that we did. So, okay, cool. That was three okay, so <laughs> if you if you're not already in our database, meaning you've ever ordered anything from us, even a download, then as Anne said, you can email customer service at Living Felt or call us at 877-665-5790. Let us know what you would like. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out with us this week, y'all, and we'll do it again next week. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Ha, ha, ha.